Now to find the composite function fg of x, we've got our two functions here. What we've got to do is say that this is equal to f of g of x. So it's f of g of x, and g of x is the natural log of x minus 1. So we do that. Now, wherever we see an x in f of x, we've got to replace it with the natural log of x minus 1. So what we have here then is, let's just move this down a bit more, we have got e to the 2 times x. So x is now replaced with the natural log of x minus 1. And then we've got the plus 3, so plus 3. Now we can clean this up because we can use the power rule um, for logs. We can take this 2 up as a power. So we end up with this equaling e to the power log of x minus 1 and that power or that number 2 goes up there as a power. And then we have the plus 3 on the end. Now e to a, na uh, a natural log, these are kind of self inverses of one another. So what you end up with here is x minus 1 all squared plus 3. You should know that rule that basically if you've got e to the natural log of something, let's say a, this is always the same as a. And I'm using that rule here. My a is the x minus 1 squared. Okay, So that gives us that. So that essentially is fg of x, the composite function. You can expand this out if you like, but uh, I leave it as that. Okay. Now, when you're dealing with this, this is helps in, when it's in this format, which we often call the completing the square format, it helps to appreciate what the range is of the composite function. Because what you can do is basically use transformations of graphs okay, to do this. If we were to look at the basic graph of, let's say, the graph of x squared, okay, which would be a parabola, something like this, if I can draw that fairly smoothly. That's the graph of f of x, if you like, equaling x squared. Now, all I need to do now is I'm looking at the graph of f of x minus 1, which would take the graph, okay, one unit to the right. So if I was to translate this graph one unit to the right, it's going to go like that. This point here would be at 1. Then I have add 3, and that means this graph goes up by 3 units. So let's just imagine that's being pushed up by 3 units. So essentially, what we've got is that this point here has been moved across 1 unit from the origin and up 3. So it's got coordinates 1, 3. And this is essentially the graph of fg of x. So, so because we've got this graph drawn here and it's moved up 3 units, it looks like the range would be greater than or equal to 3 okay, for fg of x. But we've got to be careful here because we had originally that x was greater than 1. So this value here has to be slightly more than 1. So in other words, this can never be 0. If it was 0, we'd actually get 3. So, in fact, the range is going to be just more than 3. So, therefore, we've got the range of fg of x is going to be greater than 3. Alright? Well, that brings us to the end now of this question.